There are two different ways to stream your PC to a smart TV. Now the most famous way that is probably going to work on most TVs is through Steam Link. So recently the Steam Link app got ported to many different smart TVs out there. So if we just go into our app store here, is our remote, this is a Samsung TV. What you do is you go search for Steam Link, which will show up pretty quickly here. There it is. You just go over here, click on that, hit install and it will open up and you'll see a screen like this. So there are three different ways you can actually control your computer from your TV. The first way is normally the wireless mouse or keyboard or a wireless controller. But of course, that'll only work if you're within range of your actual computer. Alternatively, the better solution is to plug in a wireless dongle into the TV directly. On the back of the TV, you'll see there's USB ports on most TVs. So you can just plug in a wide controller wide mouse and keyboard, maybe even wireless one if it has an adapter. And potentially you could even use a Bluetooth one, but I wouldn't recommend that for gaming specifically. For me, I'm gonna skip it because I've got a wireless controller here hooked up to my PC with the Xbox wireless. So I'm just gonna hit enter on the remote, can skip this. And there you go, it'll bring up a screen saying select your computer. It should show up straight away. Obviously you will need Steam installed on your computer for this to work. Make sure you do have that. I'm gonna hit enter on this, my desktop. So on the computer, you'll see this little window has popped up right here saying enter an authorization code. Now you only ever have to do this once. Once you've done it once, it'll just let you connect straight away. So be careful if, it's, if you're not the only person that uses the TV. You don't want people trying to, you know, ruin your game saves or something like that. That wouldn't be good. Yeah, just enter the code and Steam Big Picture Mode will load straight up. And on the TV side of things, you can see it's running a network test to see what settings it can actually stream it from. Now remember that this is not internet based at all. Nothing is going to the internet, it's just local. So it doesn't matter what internet speed you have. All that matters is if you have a good connection between your router and your computer and your router and your TV. So wired is always gonna be better. If you don't have wired available, make sure you're using the five gigahertz band of Wi-Fi for your network. Now for me, I've got everything wired in, so this is gonna be a decent score, 0% frame loss, variance 0.64. Now, it does also depend on what TV you're using, because a lot of the low-end, cheaper TVs like this one don't seem to work quite as well as the higher-end ones, which is to be expected. So for me, even though this is a 4K TV, the best I'm gonna get is about 1080p without any stuttering. So if you wanna get a better signal coming into it, you can get like a Nvidia Shield or something. And because it has a better processor in it, it can run the higher bitrate streams at a higher resolution if you do want that. Now, once you're in here, you should find that your controller will work straight away. So if we move around here, it should work very quickly. So when you go down to install, you'll see that this checkbox will be ticked. Just make sure you uncheck that so you can see all of your games. And we go, we've got 235 right here. And if your games that you want to play are not on Steam, you can add them on here. You just have to add it as a non-Steam game in, in the library which is pretty easy. It's right at the bottom left if you need to find it. But yeah, let's just try a game out. Let's try some Lego City. This one seems to work pretty well. Uh, I, I would recommend, in terms of games that are good for remote play, I'd recommend racing games, simpler games like Lego, not so much FPS stuff. I mean, you can get away with it, but it's a lot harder. Uh, anything 2D is fine. Pretty much anything that is controller supported and recommended is going to be good. Yeah, you can see this is all working really, really well. We've got no console is connected here it's just directly to the pc if you even press the guide button you'll see it will bring up the steam big picture ui whatever this is and it's also how you exit the game if you want to stop it or whatever it really does work very well you may find that with steam link although it does work fine on this tv on a lower end tv like an android tv from a cheaper brand it may have issues in that case what i recommend is a different streaming app called moonlight so let me just show you how this works on a different TV. All right, so here we are with a different TV. This is a TCL TV. I believe it's the Union TV model, but it runs Android TV OS, whatever it's called. So it does have the same app. It has Steam Link, but you'll find with Steam Link is it doesn't actually work quite as well as it did on the Samsung one. And I'll just show you now what happens when you try it. There we go, it's loaded in. I've actually got the statistics up on the bottom left here so you can kind of see the uh, bit rate and all that. I was diagnosing this earlier, but what you'll see already is there's about 30 milliseconds of display latency, even though the streaming is less than one. So the problem there is the TV cannot decode the video quite as quick as the Samsung could, and you saw it just flickered there as well. 
the frame loss down here is the biggest problem. It means you're not going to be getting the full 60 FPS. Let's try it with the game opens. Yeah, you'll see launching this game here, we're getting huge spikes in latency. And although it's fine on the actual computer, it seems to be that Steam Link isn't quite so good at handling it. So you'll see here, if I move my controller, you see a delay with the mouse. So that's why Steam Link isn't the best choice for lower end Android TVs, I reckon. So if we go ahead and quit this game here, yeah, Steam Link isn't so good, but what I've found is good is Moonlight. Now this actually, so the way this works is it uses the GeForce Experience game streaming, which is designed for the Nvidia Shield. Now, obviously this is not an Nvidia Shield, but we can make Nvidia think it is an Nvidia Shield. So for this to work, first of all, you're going to have to find an Nvidia graphics card, which right now is a bit difficult. Bruh. But assuming you already have one, what you got to do is go into GeForce Experience, go into Settings, go down to Game Stream, and turn that little switch on to enable game streaming. Once you've done that, it should have your PC showing up right here. But yeah, you just go ahead and select that. It's going to want to pin. So you should get this pop-up from GeForce Experience saying Shield is trying to connect. Put in our code, hit Connect. And so now it should connect. Uh, I'm not going to add the channel pop-up takes a sec to load but there we go there we go it's got up the list of games from that computer and again you're gonna have to add all these in geforce experience if you don't have a game you want to play so let's just try forza 4 there we go so what i've found is moonlight works very very well but it doesn't look nearly as good and that's probably because i've limited the bit rate quite a bit i found that around i think it's 20,000 megabits at the max is the best it can do without stuttering and that's just a limitation of his tv i reckon this is very similar to the technology that project x cloud and nvidia geforce now and even google stadia use so the experience is going to be fine it's just that having it on a bigger screen really makes it easy to see the flaws in the video very very playable i mean if i want to go straight through here right now I can do that. If I want to go left, I can do that. Obviously, I wouldn't use this sort of thing for competitive gaming because there is going to be a disadvantage. There always is. There's going to be a tiny bit of latency, but in this case, it really is not that bad. It is completely fine for casual games. So yeah, that is remote play with Steam Link or Moonlight. The cool thing about Moonlight as well is that if your PC is turned off, you can hold down the enter button here on it. And there'll be an option for wake on land so if you've configured that what it will do is it will remotely power on your computer from your tv and then it will show up in the connection menu so you can play a game on it that is super cool so i would suggest setting that up as well i might have a video on that soon it's just a bit tricky for a lot of different motherboards some of them don't work very well hopefully you found this video helpful please leave a like and subscribe if you did maybe check me out on twitch if you're interested in more gaming content or if you want to chat or have a question join my discord for stuff right there so hopefully this helps you and i'll see you in the next video yeah. Goodbye.